Hello everybody, I'm Matt here from Nuka Media Exotics and today I have another tarantula video for you guys to check out. So here is an adult female Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens or the common name for this species is the Green Bottle Blue Tarantula or GBB for short. And this is one of my adult females that I paired a few months back and she laid an egg sac about 35 days ago, give or take a few days. And so now it's time to separate her from the egg sac, open it up, and see how the spiderlings are doing. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to pop open her enclosure here. And this is an Exoterra Nano Breeders box, the medium size, for anyone that's wondering. And there she is. So this is a big adult female as far as this species goes. I mean, she's probably on the, the older end of the spectrum. I mean, she's pretty big. I don't think they really get any larger than this. And she's very pretty, as you can see. They're known for those blue colors. She's got that dark blue on her. If you shine a light on them, it's almost like a glittery blue, too, with almost like a greenish tinge, more on the carapace especially. And then they've got those red hairs on the abdomen. They're very pretty. And then you can see the egg sac right off to the left over there. And it looks like it's a pretty good size egg sac. So I'm pretty excited about this. And we're going to go ahead and just pull that right out of there. And that was very easy, all things considered. Because sometimes the females will kind of hold on to that egg sac with their, their fangs and the chelicerae on the front there. And they will not want to let go. But she wasn't holding on to it. So it made our job a lot easier today. <laughs> And so I'm going to go ahead and just place the egg sac right on this plastic lid. That way when I open it up, the little spiderlings won't be all over the table or anything. And so there it is. You can see it. And that's that's a thick layer of outer webbing that the, the female makes to, to keep all those little spiderlings in there safe and protected. And... At around the 30 to 35 day mark, I mean, it depends on temperatures, it depends on species. Um, that's around when you might want to remove the egg sac. And so I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. Some species, such as my Samapoas and stuff like that, I'll, I'll actually let them exit the egg sac in the enclosure with the mother, and it works out well. But for these guys, I felt like I should I should go ahead and separate them and check them out on my own. This is actually my first time producing this species, and so... It's very exciting, but I, yeah, I just want to make sure that they're doing well, you know. So there you go. You can see them. They're starting to fall out here, and it looks like there's a bunch of them. And you're going to see that those little legs start moving. It's pretty funny. And they're not being hurt by just dropping that little inch or two. I mean, they're very light. They have no body weight, really. And you can see them there, and they're wiggling around. And you can see that there's some dark clumps in there. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to open this egg sack up is because those are duds. And so those were, were bad eggs that have started to rot in there. And by opening up the egg sack like this and separating them, I will hopefully be saving some that would are possibly going to, you know, just get that contamination and exposure from the rotting ones. Hopefully save them. And so you can see those, there's some white clumps in there, there's some, some black clumps, and those are the duds and the bad eggs. And so I just, I just want to make sure that I'm getting that off of the good ones so that it's not sticking to them and stuff, which it does. And so I won't do that during the video because it can be kind of time consuming, but I'll just give you guys a glance. And so you can see all those little legs going. And so I'm putting them into this cup here. And this cup is basically my incubator. And it's just a little like makeshift kind of incubator thing, humidity chamber. And it's a 32 ounce deli cup with about two inches of water in the bottom. And then I suspend a piece of nylon up at the top. And then you just want to go ahead and place the lid on there. And then that'll raise the humidity in the cup. And then I leave them in there until they molt out. And then you want to separate them. And that comes to where we are right here. And so this is actually a few months later. So you guys can see how they're doing now. And just ignore the labels. These are recycled containers. You see OBT and all sorts of stuff on there. Just ignore that. These are all GBB slings from that batch you just saw. And so we're going to take one out here. And you can look at it. And look at the difference. I mean, now this is about two molts later. And you can see they've got the colors. They've grown a lot. And they've got those orange legs that the slings are known for. 
and they will go through that color change to look like the adult female that you guys saw. The They lose the orange legs and they turn to blue. And it's just all around a very great experience raising these slings so you can see that color change. And they eat well even at this size compared to some other species. They're very fun to keep. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.